This old house once knew his children. This old house once knew a wife. This old house was home and comfort as we fought the storm of life. G'day, how you going? So <laughs> I've got this last roll of um, black and white HP plus 5, um, ISO 400 this one. Uh, it's on my OM1 and it's got uh, the 1.450 millimeter on there. So now I'm getting a little bit uh, retro in my old age. <laughs> I thought I would try and shoot um, using the Sunny 16 rule, um, mainly to practice and get ahead of um, my head around the aperture and all the full stops and quarter stops and all that. But really because I broke the bloody thing, <laughs> I was trying to clean it. The wire for the battery was very um, fragile and it broke. So lesson number one, uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it <laughs> or don't clean it. <laughs> so now just as a backup, I've got this a meter, external meter, digital, you know, USB and that'll tell you exactly and I'm going to match it up and see if the Sunny 16 rule Okay so this scene here was me and my brother walking through the daffodils or the I don't know it was, it was a classic 70s uh, I think my brother was taking the piss uh, going wow look at me uh, how, how pretty are the flowers so yeah he was um, a shot I was thinking about it and we are a pretty lucky generation really uh, to have those memories saved on film and photos of the house and the family and whatever uh, that we can go back to and we can hand on to future generations. Um, personally, um, I can't even go back to my grandparents. That's how um, bad it is for our family because my family, they like pretty much peasants in Italy before the war, my grandparents, sorry. And we have, we have a few photos of them, but really um, not that many, just, and they probably came later when they were older. So when they were young, uh, absolutely none at all. Even my parents, we don't have many young photos. I don't even have a photo of my dad's father. None was ever taken, so I don't even know what he looks like. Um, to be fair, my dad doesn't even know what he looks like. Because <laughs> they were like, uh, uh, he was number nine of a litter of 12. <laughs> they didn't have TV back then. My God, so when you think of it, then my grandmother, uh, she must have been pregnant uh, every two years for 20 years. <laughs> Holy underwear. Okay, so we're going to do Sunny 16 rule. I put it at F16. And so the, today is it's overcast, so it's not sunny. We've got to do the uh, cloudy rule. So you go down one stop. So from F16, you go down to F11. So we're going to put it on F11 because it's not that sunny today. So now F11 is now the new Sunny 16. So because it's not sunny, it's overcast cloudy so that'll be uh, the new um, baseline <laughs> and ISO 400 film so 1 over 400 at f11 if I wanted to go to f8 which is another stop down then I would shoot at 1 over 800 because I'm letting more light in at f8 from F11, I'm going to F8, so I'm doubling the light. So to keep the baseline, I need to uh, reduce the light with the shutter speed. So that'll be one over 800. Jerry, what are you doing? You're on the princess carpet. Now, Jerry, just to be um, safe, I've got um, my meter reading here and I put it at ISO 400 and F11 tells me 1 over 400 speed so I was right the Sunny 16 rule actually did work hey Jerry it worked hmm yes I know technology just to back me up but if you're ever you know in doubt the Sunny 16 rule does work you know have faith <laughs> 
in the olden ways. <laughs> Gary, you see this bit over here where you always do a little roly poly on your back? This is where I used to do my roly poly on my back with my brother. <laughs> we did a little roly poly. Check out these mangoes. I mean, I think these mangoes are just as old as when this footage was taken. So yeah, this bit here, um, it's changed a bit. So I don't think that shed was there. There used to be a chicken shed there. And uh, yeah, so that's me rolling around over there with my brother. Uh, I let him win though. So I always let him win. So. <laughs> Now photos are pretty sure must have been really expensive back in you know pre World War II and that even in the 60s I mean they were really only used for like special occasions and for the lower socioeconomic people you know for most of the world really really it was only the not rich people but more affluent people in the in the 40s and 30s who had actually cameras or um, money or disposable cash to actually process that film. Now for instance these ones here if you have a look um, they're quite weird actually because I think they used to superimpose the head uh, on top of some sort of body because that doesn't look real that to me looks like painted or something and that one completely looks like it's painted I mean even uh, the suit like the tie <laughs> so it must have just been the head that was um, taken the photo of and then they just superimposed it or back in those days however the hell they did it Jerry hmm? I'm filming here Jerry so I think they even retouched them even um, with color even some of the early you know photos like I tell you what though they um, they did a pretty good job because <laughs> it's I mean if you for Photoshop <laughs> For Photoshop 1940, uh, it's a pretty good job actually. So I tried to actually find the company that um, took these photos. It's called Photo Philly Sestili. <laughs> hey, Philly Sestili uh, in Pene. And I tried to look it up on Google because I thought maybe they might have the original negatives. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty long shot. <laughs> I mean, it was what, 1961 when they got photos. On my mum's side, that's my grandparents, so that would probably be 19, I don't know, 1920. They always think that my uh, uh, grandfather looked like uh, Charlie Chaplin. He had the, the <laughs> someone else um, <clears throat> overtook that, so rather than say his name, my like Charlie Chaplin, <laughs> not, not Hitler. So it must have been the fashion back then. Mm. That died out. <laughs> Who the hell has moustaches like that anymore? I remember once there was a story in an Australian news broadcast that um, there was a developer, like a, a not a one hour shop, just like a proper shop who um, had all these unclaimed negatives. Um, I think he had to keep them by law, I'm not sure, but there was a rule that said maybe he had to keep them, uh, even if no one claimed them. And he was shutting shop like, you know, 50 years after he opened, and he had all these um, uh, negatives, you know, and no one had claimed them yet. So you can imagine all those uh, long lost memories of people. It was a really good uh, art uh, article, news story. Because I remember uh, my brother, when he took his wedding photos, he never uh, were given the, ne the, the negatives. He only got the prints. But I think I think the negatives are actually the property rights of the photographer, you know, the copyright of the photographer. So, Oi. let's get a view of the balcony. This is Jerry's favourite spot. Ouch. You cheeky girl, Jerry. Jerry's favourite spot. This is where you sit and you wait patiently for me when I come home from work. So this is a good view here of the whole street. I might take a shot here. Many a uh, photo was taken from here and you can see sort of Sydney over there. And you can see the cross of the church over there. So it's, 
Yeah. What can I do here, Jerry? What can I do here, Jerry? What do you think? Hmm? What are you looking? You're looking for the, the cat. You can smell the cat. You see the gato? Jerry, gato? And the birdie? Yeah, I'll do my uh, retro classic um, boring as batshit Eggleston photo. This time I'll pick a light bulb. It's not going to be a red one, it's going to be a green one. So, but uh, Eggleston, eat your heart out. Okay, so this is where most of our photos end up. <laughs> yeah, some end up on the wall, some end up in frames. <laughs> But most end up in these shoe boxes. If you're lucky, you didn't throw away the negatives. <laughs> most of these shots, all the negatives were thrown away. I remember when I was a kid, I was like, what do you need this shit for? We got the photos, we don't need the... <laughs> like that, and they just end up in here. Remember these uh, albums? Oh, sugar. After 30, 40 years, remember this plastic thing here would it become all sticky and shit so if you ever wanted to take one out good luck because it sometimes it might even rip off the print you know what I mean these look like instamatics or maybe on the old Kodak see how it's got a square frame so you'd get be blown out <laughs> like that <laughs> or you got if you were really the special child, which I was, I was the favourite. See, so uh, I got a, I got my own personal wooden frame. So, <laughs> and then in the 90s, you know, these ones came out. These photo albums here. And there's another mango tree. She's going to get fat this summer. Oi, you want to go for a walk? Yeah. Okay, let's take a photo of the house. Yeah, so this is the street where I grew up, playing with the kids down the road, riding our bikes. And this is the house that my dad built. That mango tree wasn't there. So, but that's the street. And when we did a lot of tennis games here, a lot of cricket games, people in their cars driving up, relatives, uncles, having parties. Jerry, why didn't you want to go for a walk? Huh? Why didn't you want to go for a walk, Jerry? Hey, you cheeky bum. Jerry. Don't you want to go for a walk? You're hungry. All right, let's get something to eat. The Super 8. <laughs> <laughs> just uh, truckloads of Super 8. I don't know what the hell to do with it. I've already converted most of it, or all of it, over to digital. So, but we've just got all these Super 8s now. You know, and the, the film canisters that came with it. Yeah, I don't know what to do with it. I think the Australian Film Institute accepts it. I don't know. I mean, it's just people's home videos, really. Speaking of home videos, Oh shit. And then we moved on to, you know, VHS. <laughs> you got your VHS and remember these were Panasonic Super VHS. The canister would go in here. Somewhere in there. Super 8 or High 8. I don't know, I can't remember. Uh, and then you got the old uh, VHS. <laughs> 
I mean, now we've, we've flicked through them on our phones and we put them on uh, digital picture frames. <laughs> Remember them, those digital picture frames? That was a bit of a fad, wasn't it? I think my brother bought one and he probably turned it on for the first month and then it just... <laughs> The little picture frames like iPads or whatever, you know. Now, I, I think there's something special about the film, the paper printed film, you know, that's different than, you know, watching it on a digital or on a screen or flicking through it on the bloody phone. <laughs> One thing that you can't do on a, on a digital photograph on your bloody iPhone is you can't flip the photo over <laughs> and discover like a, a pleasant surprise of someone's long lost relative handwritten message of, of love or the date or where they were or I flipped over and I go oh my god that's mum's handwriting you know something <laughs> tangible and different now this is the telephone room that painting's original that painting's been there for years uh, but I remember the red phone over there so I think that would make a good photo. 1 over 60 speed, this is a 50 millimeter lens. It's gotta be 150 speed or higher. So 160 speed, that matches, so you don't get the shutter shock or the handheld shock, whatever. Hey Jerry, do you understand? I think that's right. Or do you double it? I can't remember. But anyway, uh, f1.4 and 1 over 60 speed was the reading. And that's fine, because I've got a 50 millimeter and that should be, eliminate the shutter shock. Now growing up in the 70s uh, my dad bought a Super 8 camera, this one, <laughs> a Shinon 870. It documented his journey back to Italy and the adventures over there that he had but in the end he decided to come back to Australia and settle in this old house <laughs> uh, back in, uh, well it was new back in 1973 so this old house used to be new once <laughs> 1973 when he came back and you can see a lot of the footage around here from this camera so um, now i wish they had um sound that would have been awesome if they had sound but i think that would have been they were more expensive cameras they had the extra lead on the right hand side or the left hand side of the sound and then we've got the living room so and the living room, well not really, this used to be an underground cellar, under the house cellar. It's a weird design. So, but then we designed, decided to make it into a kitchen and a... Can you hear the fun? Can you sense the thunder, Jerry? You're getting, you're getting, oh no, Jerry. I think it's gonna rain. And then in the kitchen, I don't know how exciting this photo would be. Let's put the Coke can there just for nostalgia. Should I clean up or just leave it as is? A moment in time. Hey, Jerry. <laughs> hey, Jerry, you're a cheeky bum. Huh? I did, a, I did a painting of you, Jerry. Good girl. Now the uh, world of Super 8 uh, he's tried to make a comeback. <laughs> I think uh, Kodak tried to release a new version of Super 8. It costs more than a bloody Leica. It's like five or six grand for this crappy, I don't know, <laughs> uh, I don't think anyone would be buying that. Anyway, moving on from that, then they kind of turned into those super big bulky things that you'd carry on your shoulder and shit. Uh, we kind of skipped all that because they were really expensive. When we got into it, we got into these things, the old Digicam. So the old Panasonic, she's a beauty. <laughs> look at this one. Jerry, look, the dat tape. You see the dat tapes? Yeah, put it on dat tapes there, so. Jerry, the camcorder, zoom. Now it even had a flippy screen, so you can block with this. <laughs> hey Jerry, huh? Vlogging with the 1990s. So the garage was where we used to have all our parties. Well, Dad didn't. And a confirmation, communion. Uh, where can I do a photo, Jerry? How about this? Uh, that's a classic. <laughs> Take a photo of that. Mother Mary and Jesus and Marilyn. It's a bit dark in here. Eventually hard drives took over and then it went to SD cards <laughs> and now you can bloody stream to the whole world live. 
<laughs> Can you imagine where we've come from? Now everyone has their own direct satellite link up to the world. I remember in the old days to get a satellite, what was it, some of those movies where they would say, oh, you know, you know how expensive this satellite link is? You know, <laughs> now you just jump on YouTube and you can be satellite linked to the whole world for free. You know, <laughs> it's amazing how far we've come. Now, every generation um, looks back, uh, whether it's a celluloid or it's on hard drive. I'm sure in, you know, in 30 years time, we're all going to be laughing at 1080p, you know. Hey, Jerry. What? <laughs> I think we're laughing at 1080p already. All right, here's one shot I think I'll take off. This is um, nostalgic because this is the seat that everyone sat in, <laughs> obviously. This is where most I spend my time, most of my time these days, eating potato chips. I, always, I had a memory, I always remember my dad used to sit there and uh, I used to watch him, he used to smoke, and I used to, I used to lay down here and just used to watch him as the smoke came in and out of his mouth. That's the one memory I have. Yeah, I'll, I'll do a photo of an empty chair. Might be another Eggleston moment. Used to be the living room when we used to live upstairs. And uh, that table's pretty old, but that used to be there, around there. And there'd be everyone would sit around and drink martinis and Chinzano and <laughs> tiramisu and this was the kitchen originally I think don't think this got much use I don't know why um, they built it like this I guess once they kitchen downstairs went in this kind of went into the way of the dodo um, I think my brother used it once uh, when he was building his house but uh, now it's my I don't know what the hell it is. It's my, my charging station. <laughs> but yeah, actually, it's a 1960s. What I should do, I should get rid of everything and make it like a, as if it was like the 60s and take a photo. That would be awesome. I'm not that committed for a photo. <laughs> Maybe I just a photo of the, of the uh, stove. I don't know what the hell this video was for, but it's just a bit of uh, fun going back to nostalgia. How the hell do you rewind on this? Rewind. Is that it? That must be it. I can't remember. Oh shit, don't, don't open it, Rob. You idiot. Oh, you idiot. And then you gotta go this way. Yeah, I can feel it. Might be a few light leaks on those last few shots. That should be enough. Yeah, lucky. Lucky, lucky Jerry. All right. Anyway, that's it. Bit of fun, something to do around the house. Let's go develop it and I'll catch you on the next one. Hope they turned out. Jerry, you reckon they turned out? Probably not. Mm. Anyway, if they didn't turn out, then the Sunny 16 rule can go. This old house wants new children. This old house wants new wife. This old house wants home and comfort as they fought the storms of life. This old house folks pray with laughter This old house heard many shouts Now he trembles in the dark Swing the light and walks about Ain't gonna need this house no longer Gonna need this house no more Ain't got time to fix the shingle Ain't got time to fix the floor Ain't got time to oil the hinges Nor to mend those window panes Ain't 
singing on the hood this and a small long it's singing a friend to me in six. Jerry! 